G'day, welcome to New Game Plus TV. Crunch here, and uh, this is a little set that I made because we're not gonna have a TV studio for a little bit, so I figured might as well make something that looks a little bit like a video game set. Got the purple light in the background, kind of similar to Jason's setup that you might have seen on the brick wall a few months ago. Uh, we can do the little color change situation, uh, but purple obviously is what New Game Plus is all about. Check out Murasaki Gameu, by the way, if you like weird games. But uh, we've got a full show coming up for you this week. Uh, Adrian and I check out Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, which was a favorite of ours before on the GameCube. Uh, the remastered version on PS4 and Switch and mobile, actually, has had quite a few problems. So we get into that um, in our review. Uh, Millie also brings a review of Beyond Blue, which is not the mental health service. This is... Uh, sort of like ASMR the game, I believe she described it as. It's a deep diving sort of walk em up. A little bit weird, but very, very chill, very calming. She gets into that. And uh, Jason has also been playing Fairy Tale. Um, it's literally just called Fairy Tale. There's no like subtitle or subtext. Um, but if you're not, even if you're not into Fairy Tale and you like a certain kind of RPGs, uh, you probably are gonna be into uh, what the game brings. So that's what's coming up on the show this week. But first, let's get into our review of Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered. Adrian, we had been looking forward to Crystal Chronicles for so long. So Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles uh, was a weird stepchild of, I mean, there's a lot of weird stepchildren of Final Fantasy. Um, of that series, it was on the GameCube the in 2000. Final Fantasy is weird. It so. is weird. Oh, I mean, that's true. The mainline series is kind of fucked up. Um, but I just don't get it. Crystal Chronicles was the big offshoot, though. I mean, you know, you've got you oh. got mainline RPG Final Fantasy, and then you've got Crystal Chronicles being like kind of Diablo-ish style gameplay. With you had you had to have four Game Boy Advances with the link cables yep. bought separately to play it. Like I guess with what most people would consider to be its proper design. Because it had a single player what? mode, but it wasn't really yeah. made for single player. It was made for four players. Legit. So it was like the only way to play multiplayer. You couldn't play with the GameCube controllers. You had to get multiple Game Boy Advances. So if you want to play four player, you needed to essentially make this Frankenstein Wii U in 2003. And so it was this really fun right, right. twist on co-op competitive sort of dungeon crawling with a Final Fantasy skin over the top, basically. It was not a very Sounds. well polished game. It was a bit of a mess. Mm. Like the Sounds a bit messy. It was yeah. charming though. It was a charming mess. I, I still kind of don't understand exactly what they're trying to go for with the story <laughs> other than just like you dropped in this loose. Square Enix game. <laughs> where But it's but it's interesting because it's it's quite hands off. Like the story is kind of like I mean it's crystals, you know, as Final Fantasy always is. There's crystals, you've got a collect some substance that's nah. going to save the world from basically becoming poisoned. You got um, a drop of murder yeah, in nah. your chalice to refuel the crystal to keep the barrier over your town so that monsters don't come in and kill all. Oh no, not monsters, poison. The entire world is covered poison. in poison. Yeah, it's a fluvium yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's kind of the setting. The gameplay is really just like a, a Final Fantasy Diablo light. Like, Mm. Literally, yeah. you know, you guys don't have phones. Now you can basically play that game on your phone. Because um, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered is on PS4. Well, <laughs> not at the moment, but we'll get to that in a sec. PS4, Switch, iOS, and Android. Now, I, I think it's worth pointing out, I, it's a compelling opportunity for mobile users because there's nothing really this sort of meaty and polished on mobile. Um, mm. Other than Raid Shadow Legends, apparently. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, there's, there's a lot of Final Fantasy games that are on mobile, but they're they're, they're like oh, 20 yeah. bucks each. This is actually free. Yeah. So you can get the first three dungeons and Ooh. play through them for free. There's nothing stopping you doing that. Exciting. Um, in the original, we spoke about that weird Frankenstein Wii U situation before. In the remaster, there is no couch co-op. There is exclusively um, online multiplayer. And so... What, so bad. I get why they were... It, it, it's difficult because they were not going to make their money back on the PS4 and Switch versions of this. So they needed to push for cross-play. They needed to play for mobile launches. And that, I think, probably is what blew out the release timeline for them because they were like, the business case is not here. No one gives a shit about this weirdly obscure game. If you were going to keep the same system, because obviously the reason why they had Game Boy Advances is the multiplayer control uh, on the original is that you have all that menu space that you need to access to really get your characters yeah. items and spells and, and mm -hmm. all of that sorted. And to translate that, you'd have to have like some sort of smartphone connectivity with the TV. 
to like be able to do that. So I get why it's online only. It literally um, would have but been perfect fit on the Wii U. Like they could have launched it on the Wii U and it would have been perfect. Like, yeah. why I, did they not do I, that? I can't help but feel like, you, you do make a good point there, Adrian, but I, I can't help but feel like a Jackbox style system would have worked. Do you know what I mean? Like, especially They're if it's available on mobiles. Uh, well, again, th this is the thing. You start talking about Japanese companies and their like programming capabilities and stuff like that, and you know, then then you're in a bad spot because, um, yeah, like it, it's just not what uh, they're known for generally. But I, I feel like, yeah, I, I I think I agree with you when you say that it, it seems confused on who like who this was aimed at and how they intended to make their money back on it because, like, the only two people I know who know about Crystal Chronicles like you two, Cart. And I think that's the end of the exhaustive yeah. list because may maybe we were the only people who could afford GBA link cables in those in those days. So I've I just played play single player like that. Yeah, boy. No, I only played it in single player <laughs> as well. So, like the multiplayer rewards you mentioned, Jason, kind of suck. The multiplayer implementation across the board is a nightmare because your PlayStation friends or your Switch friends don't um, like you can't use them to play with you need to add them as a crystal chronicle friend. as a friend's code yeah, everything yeah. is on square enix's server so you need to add uh, them via a six minute temporary invite code or yeah. a what? what like 16 per 16 digit permanent code or something and that's how you like you, you follow them by doing that because this is a nightmare where, like you have to follow them and have them follow you back and then that's how you become friends and it's like none of that is explained like i never left twitter Oh my god! Oh, implying that people I follow I'm friends with. Um, a bit of a stretch. Rude. Yikes! It's frustrating. It's exhausting for them as well. We really wanted to enjoy it. That's yeah. the thing. Like I, I still enjoy parts of the single player, and I yeah. think the world is really fascinating, and the music is really fun, and the the gameplay is, you know, not such an impediment. At least when you're playing in single player, maybe they might patch that in multiplayer. Um, but. <laughs> For now, you literally can't buy it. I think if you've got an iPhone or, you know, an Android phone that'll play it, sure, go and download it because it's free and you can mess around in single player in some of the, the early dungeons. The touch controls are okay. They're not the best, but they're okay. Um, and the graphics, you know, for a phone game, we've seen much better phone games, but it's it's not a, a bad looking game on an iPhone. Um, I don't know. Is there anything else that you need to, that you think you should add, Adrian? I think just, you know, it's one of those things where as a kid playing this game when it came out on the GameCube, I just didn't have the budget to, to buy link cables. I didn't have mates that had link cables in Game Boy Advances. So, so I was really excited for this to be the opportunity. Yeah, this was the opportunity for us to actually play the game the way that we wanted to play it when we were kids. And so that that's unfortunate. Um, so I think when lockdown is over, I'm just going to eBay a copy of it on GameCube and uh, grab a couple link cables, and we'll uh, we'll just have to do it locally the old school way. Yeah, I think I've still got my copy somewhere. I might have to dig it up, but yeah, I mean, I'm sure you do. You, you you find it on Wii. You, you, I mean, yeah, you, you get a copy, chuck it in a Wii because Wii's are so easy to come by nowadays. GameCube is maybe not. Link cables maybe not. That'll be interesting. Still got my GameCube. Still got a link cable. So oh, okay, let's go. Wow, look at over here. Look at me. I got money for a link cable. Ooh. Eventually, I got money for a link cable. Just one. Uh, single. I can Just only one. afford one. Just one. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, Final Fantasy Crystal one Chronicles. Uh, Crystal Chronicles released, uh, but it is not currently available uh, on PlayStation 4 or Switch. It will probably be at a later date, but you can download... Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered right now uh, on iOS and Android. Multiplayer is still kind of dodgy though, so really just play the free version. If you're really into the uh, single player experience in the dungeons, you might be inclined to drop the 20, 30-ish dollars on the, the iOS full version, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's not available on consoles at the moment. Hopefully they resolve those server issues soon. You're hanging out with us here on New Game Plus TV live on Twitch. Stick with us. We've got more video game goodness coming up in just a little bit. You're hanging out with us here <laughs> on New Game Plus TV live on Twitch. Uh, you might be hanging out with us on C31, C44 or as a podcast. I'm Cringe. I'm here with Millie, Jason and Adrian. And Millie, Hello. Beyond Blue is a Hi. mental health service, but Beyond Blue is also a video game that you've been <laughs> playing recently. Indeed, I have because it was on sale and I bought it. Um, so I played it on the PlayStation 4, but it's available on PC, Xbox One, and the Apple Store, which I did not know, but I know my iPhone would probably take off if I tried to play this game. I thought you were saying it'd be um, like on like Mac or something. And I'm like, yeah, I love to <laughs> command F in Mac. 
It probably actually is mm. on at, on Mac, but I would not play it on my Mac because it would just it would just fly away. Um, but basically, Beyond Blue is a game that's set in the future, like a nearish future, where they play as a deep diver scientist named Mirai, who's super cute, by the way. She's got like such a bubbly personality. And she's wearing this new high tech dive suit, which allows her to stream what she's seeing in the ocean directly to viewers while communicating with them, with two other scientists. And what they're doing is basically about um, ocean conservation. So they're looking at how the corals are changing. They're looking at how with the changes in the coral, can they use this coral to like help with cancer patients? Um, they're looking at using scientific robots to identify changes in the water temperature. Is that affecting ocean health? Um, but you as the player, you play as Mirai, and she is really interested in this pod of sperm whales. And the first thing that you do, as soon as you're put in the game, you find your sperm whales and they are life size so you don't know so you're this little tiny human swimming around this huge sperm whale and they emulate the clicks of a sperm whale which is um they can actually damage you sperm whale clicks because <laughs> they're so loud through the um controller so every time the sperm oh, whales wow. click and groan it, your controller is vibrating it's just oh, like it's so it sounds like lots of it too Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bit like that, but it doesn't make any noise, but like the controller vibrates. Um, but they obviously, this game, you can't die, you can't do anything. Basically, it all drills down into walking simulator, one of those games. Um, there's no set path, but there's a very set goal. If you just keep paddling around, you don't go anywhere. It doesn't become night, you don't die, you don't get eaten by a shark or anything. <laughs> but. You just put in an area and your job is to just give the viewers a good show about the ocean. So you just sort of zoom around, you scan things with your little scan tool, you zoom towards sea creatures, you scan them, you figure out what uh, what you're meant to do. So some scenes you're just meant to tag them, other scenes you're just meant to document their health, how healthy they are. And then one scene you get to see a little baby sperm whale swimming around. And it's it's a very relaxing game. Like I played um, Horizon Zero Dawn before I played this game and I got so bored, I got frustrated. So I had to go to this game and I was just instantly at peace. <laughs> Robo dinosaurs just, to Zen. Yeah, like yeah. literally the, it was just, could not go from one extreme to the other any more intensely. Like <laughs> the disparity, mm -hmm. I love it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it, it, yeah, it, it really does from what I've heard other people say as well. It seems like it's a more easygoing kind of subnautica slash abzu. It seems to be that's a there's like a, a small kind of vein of these sort of like underwater exploration games at the moment. Absolutely, yeah. It's it's sort of it's very much subnautica without the like leviathans and threat of death and everything. You just you just chill. You just scan dolphins basically. <laughs> It's just so imagine fun. video just... games to kind of like pop your headphones on and just like just get immersed in it, just vibe oh, out. Absolutely, it plays like it, it's. Nice. I think from what I can recall, um, because it's just so chill, I'm just like swimming around, scan fish. Um, it plays like some sort of like um, what's that drum called? Like that tin drum. It's a bit like that, like that really relaxing sort of music in the background. Like think of an ocean sequence. It's that sort of noise playing in the yeah. background. And nice. what really surprised me when I finished the game, because it doesn't take long, I, pl I finished it in about a day. It's a very short game, but it's just pure relaxation. It was actually um, inspired and it features clips from Blue Planet 2. So the, document, uh, the documentary about the ocean. So it's taken like, it's, it's basically a walking documentary. It's just, oh man, I, can't, I could just like, I can just warble on about how chill it is because it's just so chill. I guess to wrap up, um, like, Beyond yes, Blue course. is a like a, very much a relaxing, basically walking simulator, but um, the, the music, the graphics, like it all of it comes together simulator. to be a really compelling experience if you just want to chill, right?
If you just like, if you're really frustrated with the game, just quit that game, go to Beyond Blue, and just swim around, skin some fishies for a bit. Like, there's there's no obligation, there's no time limit. Just swim around, scan some fishies, look at Mirai's butt, like change the colors of her suit. Just like, just have a good time. Just go look at some dolphins. They're so beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Go on. It's fun. Um, Beyond Blue is available now on PS4, Xbox One, PC, uh, and Apple Arcade, actually. Um, so if you're on... Mm -hmm. uh, oh, and Switch. Pretty much everything. So it's on pretty much it everything. It is on Switch? Oh, yeah, okay. by the looks. Um, I might actually yeah. download it now. I've nice. got Apple Arcade. Uh, you're hanging out. It's pretty just... fun. Yeah, well, I mean, it, fun, fun, and then there's fun, and then there's like I just kind of want to vibe for a little bit. Like I don't want to be chill super fun. invested. I it's just like want... Animal Crossing. Yeah. It's chill fun. Yeah, like this morning, I did not want to play. Like wake up and play a you know a platform where it's like difficult platform. Where I'm like I do not have the brain power for this at the moment. I just want to hang out and get the cutting board recipe. I'm just really chill about Animal Crossing. Um, you're hanging out with your own DIY. Oh, I'll, I'll make I'll make you one. Don't worry, I'll do just send you. Oh, you you should have said that. It's Please do. I really want that. Um, <laughs> you're hanging out with us here on New Game Plus TV. Uh, stick with us. We've got more video game goodness coming up in just a bit. You're hanging out with us here on New Game Plus TV live on Twitch. You might be with us on C31, C44 or listening to us as a podcast. I'm Cringe here with Millie, Adrian and Jason. It's a live show. That's why everything looks a little bit chaotic and I, it's we'll whatever. We'll do it live. Fine. We literally Fuck are doing it, it live. We're doing it um, live. One thing that Jason, you've been doing lately is playing a lot of video games. We have a gamer on staff at New Game Plus. <laughs> I know what a That's surprise! On like, staff, I'm, so I'm just, gamer. I'm just on staff. I'm just on staff. Just the guy who <laughs> shows on, up. Don't do um, this. But you're uh, like, oh, no, I'm not bitter at all about the fact that you. I've, I've got all these reviews, and I'm like, okay, yeah. review them. Like, let's go. Fairy Tale. You are like, I need to make sure that people know it's a gust RPG, and I'm like, okay. Yes, yeah, because it is, okay, so Koei Tecmo announced that they're going to do an anime crossover. Now, if you hear, so uh, Tales, um, um, uh, what's it, Atelier, uh, Riza, yeah. like, um, the Atelier series, yeah. It, it, those style of, um, the Atelier series, that style of the JRPG, they've got their own kind of take on the Tales formula. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, it's, it's a company that makes it. And so, um, Gust have been bought by Koei Tecmo. They're part of Koei Tecmo. So, when you hear Koei Tecmo doing an anime property, you assume it's going to be a Musou game. Like, One Piece, they made that for Namco. Uh, Berserk, they that was a, a Musou game. So, you hear Koei Tecmo and you just assume it's going to be like a run around hack and slash. It's something like Fairy Tale where, you know, they've all got magics and they've all got these different kinds of magics and all that. I mean, it lends itself to that One Piece-y kind of formula, but it's not that. Like, it's pure, like run around, stand in a line, hit the enemies, like a traditional RPG in a lot of ways. And I wasn't expecting that going in. So the, the big thing I would say is there's nothing inherently wrong with it. Like it's a well-made Gust RPG. I just wasn't expecting a Gust RPG. So when it start, when I start playing it, I'm like, what the what, hell? What like it's a, it's a, yeah. Cause like, yeah. And you expect the usual, here's the map, here's the red, here's the blue, make the blue bigger than the red or whatever the color. Like, you know what I mean? Like you know how Musou games work. You know how Gust RPGs work. If you've played one, they're all pretty similar. This has like a, a simple grid system. So you've got like uh, nine squares um, that different moves will hit different parts of that mm. grid. So uh, it's, it's a formula that a lot of people are doing nowadays. And, you know, Gus didn't necessarily start it, but they definitely they're were, committed were, to were it. proponents of, of, yeah, yeah. And so so in this, it's really obvious that, like, you know, it's similar to um, uh, what's the second South Park game? Not Stick of Truth. Oh, Funk. Um, uh, what is it? The um, Broken Fractured But Whole? Bro but Whole. Fractured But Whole. Fractured. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, uh, that. that yeah, so, so that's a similar concept as well, but its grid is huge. Like, it's got – it's a little bit more based on positioning and stuff as well. So it's it's got that semi-tactical mindset, but it kind of doesn't really matter. Like, the grind in this game is easy, so you, it's not really a grindy RPG. Like, once you've – once you've got a certain level of strength, yeah. Once you're four levels ahead of any given enemy, you can pretty much just body him without without losing too much health. Um, so it's it sits in this interesting thing where you can't grind it for hours, but at the same time, like it like to to get the most out of it, you want to do all the side quests, you want to do all these little things. And it again, it, you you are there for how they're telling the story, and it's well voice acted, uh, and they've animated a lot of the scenes, and and it does a a good one to one job of telling this particular arc because i think that's one thing that um so like especially the my hero academia game did really poorly was watching the my hero academia anime 
uh, tell the story of um, that arc was really, it was like, it was great. Like My Hero Academia, people sleep on it. It's so fantastic. But the game did such an awful job of it that I don't feel like they, they even really told the same story. Like they missed, they skipped so many things and the way that they told it was boring. Even when I watched it on anime afterwards, I knew what to expect, but I, I still enjoyed the experience. The way that they do this, I don't feel like you need to go back and watch it. And it's a very specific choice because a lot of times when they do anime games, they'll do the first arc. They want people to play this and then move on and watch the rest of the series. This, it comes in like a time skip that's probably... 150 200 episodes in so it's like it's ages into the series and it's middle of a time skip where they've they've brought the game in so you kind of have to be up to date like i had to catch up real quick because there was just things i was referencing i'm like oh no I, like why is this person here like who is this how did this happen so it, it really is the, the kind of the good and bad of it is it really is a game for fairy tale fans and those kind of fans would usually enjoy rpg games so there's a good crossover there but you don't be fooled into thinking you can just pick this up and play it and that you're going to, to understand specifically where it's coming from because you're not. Like, there's so much kind of... Um, the, the, if you haven't watched the series, you're starting right in the middle of... Like, they're in their power peaks. Like, they're starting to peak up in their power. All the stories starting to kind of come to a crescendo. So it's not something you can pick up as a new fan of the series, but as, like, an old fan of the series. I guess it's really good and it's a good Gust RPG, but... I mean, you already know the story. You already know everything. So, again, it's going to come down to how much you enjoy playing these kind of RPGs over, say, it being a good introduction to the series. That said, it's well made. Everything about it has that that same kind of charm, the silliness of the characters. Um, I disagree with some of the um, translation choices, but mm. that's me being a weeb. But, yeah, that's that, that's kind of how I present it is. It's definitely for, uh, for fairy tale fans, but I think... Because it's a Gust RPG, you've also then got to be a fan of Gust RPGs. So I, I hope it does well for them because it, it is a well-polished and well-made game, but it's 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 a niche in a niche, and I, I just don't know how so you how well you're that goes. You can't enjoy result. the game if you're not like if you're a big fan. If you enjoy Gust RPGs like that format, that yes. that won't be enough. I you need you to be, be into fairy tales. No, I, well. I, I think I. I I would say that that is probably the, the correct way to look at it. If you're a Gust RPG fan, it's a it's a decent Gust RPG, well told. Um, the story is familiar, so if you know, if even if you know the basics of how that world works, you'll be okay. But I think as a fairy tale fan, like it's already telling an arc. You've already if you've finished fairy tale, you've already seen this arc. Right. You, you know, it's an important time. They do a good job of telling that important time. It's of course it's a tournament arc because every shonen anime has a goddamn tournament arc. But like. <laughs> um, they do a good job of, of, of doing that. But yeah, I think, I think you're right. I think it's more for the Gust fans than it is necessarily for the fairy tale fans. Um, that said, it's still a really good game. I still enjoyed it. It's still well told. But I would recommend that you would get up to... Uh, just look up Ten Row Island. If they start talking about Ten Row Island, you know you're in the right spot. You can play the game and you'll be fine from there. Um, so you, that one is available on, I mean, PS4, I imagine. Where else? And Switch, I believe, as well. Cool. So, uh, Fairy Tale. Yeah. Is it literally just Fairy Tale the game? It's Fairy Tale. So it's the name of the anime. Fairy Tale. That's it. Cool. Like, and that's how you can tell they're not going for a, a second one or a third one because there's no kind of tagline. There's no so, cult, yeah. you know, like subtext or anything. Yeah. Subtitle. That is a wrap on New Game Plus TV for this week. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, if you want to see uh, more pre-recorded content, like potentially. The recommended that was aired as part of the full episode on Twitch. Uh, you can go to youtube.com slash new game plus TV. The Twitch channel is, of course, twitch.tv slash new game plus TV. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram slash new game plus TV. The website is new game plus TV. We're working on getting the podcast up and running again because the way that SoundCloud publishes stuff, it's a little bit all over. So I'm working with Demi to get that sorted. But um, you can also find I was wondering why you hadn't pushed me to re record a new one. So there you go. Yeah, now it's a little bit, it's, it's, a bit cooked because I'm trying to get get WordPress working and that's always a nightmare. So well, that will happen yeah, yeah, shortly. Yeah, yeah. 20, 20 um, a bit cooked anyway. That's correct. A bit. Um, thank you so much for hanging out with me, Adrian, Millie, and Jason. No worries. And no worries. Um, thank you for hanging out with us at home and we'll catch you next time. <laughs>